this year I was lucky enough to get judge feedback. I just got it literally yesterday, I think. He said, I certainly brought strength to the stage, but a little too much in the upper body. <laughs> we and are... you're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back to the drawing board. We at the Legion Sports Fest show in Reno at the end of September, I was immediately struck as the Wellness Masters group took the stage by Teresa Myers, someone who I thought immediately was like, that's someone who is either needing to be in women's physique or has maybe competed there before. As it turns out, I was right. So I had a chance to sit down with Teresa and talk about her competitive career up to Legion this year and what she has in store beyond that as well in episode 272 of The Drop Set. Let's hit it. All right, Teresa Myers, welcome to The Drop Set. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So we were we were kind of chatting and I realized, you know what, we should be recording this um, before I actually hit the record. So we're just gonna jump right into it here. Um, I found you because I was watching the Legion Sports Fest Pro um, on live stream. And as I uh, was doing for a bit, I do like live commentary on those and then I post those online as well. So um, I think a lot of people like they, they enjoy hearing a coach's feedback, like somebody who's like, he doesn't know these people, so he's just not gonna say that everybody's great and this and that, so kind of getting right. some honest feedback. And so I saw you on there and my comment was, man, she really looks kind of like half women's physique, half wellness. And then I dig in and I find out, well, that's where you came from. So yeah. that kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so take, take me back, like when, when did you start and like where did you start and when did you move into wellness? Okay, so I started back in 2013. Um, first of all, I was always an athlete, mostly soccer, up into adult league. I injured myself and that's what kind of brought me to bodybuilding. So um, anyway, I had a good friend of mine who had done some research on coaches, which was Trish Wood through Iron Addiction. Um, so again, I started back with her then. Um, I walked in thinking, oh, no big deal. You just step on stage and flex and whatever. Totally. And That's I how it works, like, I'm pretty oh, sure. No, this is a whole new ball game. Um, <laughs> I call it my alter ego because that glitz and glam and stage presence stuff is uh, not really me, but um, I'm enjoying Do you it. find when... When you get up on stage, do you find that you kind of have to slip into character almost? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So with that said, too, I wanted to start out and figure. And at the time, wellness wasn't around. And right. Trish was like, no, you're a physique girl. She was already physique, you know, for a while. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> OK, let's go over this. And um She's like, you don't have that hourglass, tiny waist, like you're already built, um, so let's try physique. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just trust you. You know what you're talking about. I have no idea. So um, <laughs> that's how I started. And even that first season, I think there were a couple times where I'm like, well, I kind of want figure because it's the heels and, you know, whatnot. And then more glitz you know, and glam. Up with that routine, which um, was always stressful for me for physique. Um, because I'm not a dancer, I'm a brick wall robot. <laughs> Ditto. Anyway, um, she she would always tell me no, so I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done even trying. So, anyhow, uh, I did my first four years, and then 2018, we went to Pittsburgh together for Pittsburgh uh, Masters Nationals, and I won first in my class, and then I also won the overall. So from there. Sailed away. Boom. <laughs> and then, and um, so, yeah, keep going, keep going. Oh, that's okay. So that was 2018. I competed a number of times um, as pro physique, and I can't remember what year it was, but I did uh, Wings of Strength in Arizona, and I earned three Olympia points back when they were doing the point system. Back but when that, that was that time, thing. I'd already done, like, three shows, and... As people know, this is no poor man's sport. So I was like, I got to go into off season. So um, 
It also kind of drains there. your battery quite a bit. After you do three shows, you're like, well, let me just do three more and earn some more points. And it's like, Ugh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not sustainable. We'll say that. No, no. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so, you know, that was my peak back then. Um, and then in 2021, I met my current husband and I ended up taking two years off thinking I was retiring, never doing it again, because I did a show in the Bahamas, uh, again for Wings of Strength, in 2021, and standing in that lineup before stage, I was like, man, these women are huge. <laughs> <laughs> Which, There's yes. definitely an evolution. If you go back to like 2013 up to 2021 and look at yes. what women's physique did in that time, yes. it, it's hardly recognizable, really. Right. and. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. Like, I love muscle and um, all that. So it's beautiful, but just me personally, I was like, I think I'm done growing. <laughs> so anyway, I took two years off, thinking I was retiring, wouldn't step on stage again. And then in um, 2023, I kind of had my, okay, let, let's get back to me. Um, yeah. Bodybuilding completes me, so I went to Trish and I said, what are your thoughts of me trying wellness? Um, because in those two years, yes, I would still train here and there, but I was mostly doing legs. Um, so she's like, you know what, let's just give it a shot. So I did. Was that mostly well, training legs based on like feedback that you had gotten before or just because no, you're just like, this is what I want to do. Training legs. <laughs> okay. You're, you're I one of those psychopaths. I love training shoulders too, but um, yeah. mostly it was lower body just cause I prefer it. Um, so anyway, she's like, sure, let's try it. Let's just see where you're at. Um, so I did a 12 week prep. I was definitely probably ready, uh, four weeks out. And then it was more of a matter of, okay, we need to soften you up now, fill you out. Um, anyway, so I did, ended up doing legions in 2023 and I did not do well <laughs> um, <laughs> because as you said it's a physique girl going into wellness and at the time I was still training upper body and um, training like I was in physique yeah. so um, again I was definitely overlooked last year and so I thought well, okay, that, that was your first your first foray in front of the judges as wellness so you're like correct. all right let's see how this goes and then the feedback yes. is like oh okay <laughs> yeah I never ended up getting judge feedback but Trish was like I, I think we know <laughs> um, yeah. she's like it's not that you didn't belong up there you just didn't fit the criteria so we took this last year and I really focused on training towards wellness and I haven't trained upper body in a good five plus months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think for me, just as slowly as it is to build the muscle, it takes yeah. that long to lose it as well. And I, I yeah. don't want to lose it, lose it, but I definitely need to downsize it. Um, lose it a little bit, just not all the right. way. Right. Just, yeah. uh, just tweak it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so stepping on 2024, for Legion stage, I felt like I was at my peak personally. Um, I felt like I put in the hard work. I did what it took to tweak the physique. Um, so I was ready. I was like, okay, I think for me, it's already a win. I could tell just in my comparison photos that, um, that it was working. So this year stepping on stage, I think, honestly, out of all the years I've competed was my most confident. Um, I, I don't know. I just internally felt this like, wow, I've got this. Like, I, I, I did it. Um, sorry, like almost makes me emotional. No, that's good. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, women, I think, have, I mean, in the world of competitive bodybuilding, they have a lot of challenges that men don't. Like, first of all, men don't have to spend $600 on a suit. Men don't have to do hair and makeup before every show. Um, but also, like, men don't really have the problem of what category do I fit in best. Like, it's like, well, do you have legs? No. Men's physique. Right. Oh, you do have legs? Okay, well, are you a bodybuilder or are you classic physique? It's really kind of like an eyeball test, like, eh. But it's not, it's not hard to figure out your path there. For women, right. though, it's like, 
And then once you're in that category, I always feel like the judging criteria is like, you know, sometimes it's like trying to hit a bullseye the size of a trash can lid with a shotgun from the moon. It's like, I mean, it's such a narrow, small target. It's yeah. like, oh my God, like the differences between first and second is like, well, you know, on the back pose, I know their back is hidden by their hair, but it looks like they might be a little too ripped. It's like, right. oh my God, right. it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Yes. But one thing I get asked a lot, and as an IFBB competitor in one of these categories, how caught up do you get in that? Or do you, are you more just like, I know big picture what I need to do. You put yourself on stage and then you just kind of let go of the rest of it from there. Yeah. I mean, you have to, because I mean, everybody peaks differently. Um, and sure this person can look great on social media over here one week and this person whatnot, but then you step on stage at the same time. And then it's really just the comparison. Because, yeah, I can compare myself to anybody online, but really, in reality, once I'm standing next to them, in your full, you know, whatever. Um, Presentation. <laughs> yes. Then, then that's where you really see. That's where you really um, get the comparison. Uh, so yeah, I can't and... beat myself up too much of like, oh my God, this woman looks great and she's going to be at the show and this woman. and I mean, they all look beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But... Um, well, yeah. as, as they say, though, like on social media, everyone looks like Mr. Olympia when they're by themselves. Right, right, and it's, exactly. it's the comparisons that matter. And even like exactly. watching a show, watching a live stream, you know, you do the group comparisons. OK, then everybody comes out for their individual presentation. And that for me, because I'm not a professional judge, so I don't know all these people right off the bat. I also don't have their numbers in front of me to know who they are. So that's kind of like when I'm first making my my notes about people who I think is first call out material. And I'll, may, I'll see somebody and be like, oh, holy cow, yeah, definitely. And then you see 10 more people go by, and you're like, well, I still think they were really impressive. And then you see them up there, and you're like, oh, no, no, they, yeah. they were definitely second call out appropriate. Like, you've yeah. got to see everybody on stage together. By yourself just doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, by myself, I look amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least you can say that. Like, some, some of us don't even have that much. Like, by myself, I'm like, meh, I'm oh, here. No, that's, the, still, that's what I can say. <laughs> I can still pick myself apart for sure. I think all women do that no matter what. <laughs> I, I think as bodybuilders, we're all professionals at that, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, I want to go yeah. back and revisit. You said 2021 was your last physique show? Correct. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So at, at... Yeah. Okay. At that point, because you mentioned like, Ugh, here's where physique is going. Was it more like, I, I don't want to grow anymore or I think I'm kind of capped out and I don't think I can get any bigger or some combination of both? Um, I think it was more of a want because okay. when I was competing in physique, I remember even having moments of, man, should I step it up to bodybuilding? Mm. Um, cause I think, I mean, luckily with my genetics, I guess, and my mindset, I could probably technically go either way. Yeah. Um, but so personally it was for me, I just at that time didn't want to keep getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I um, gotcha. Well, and that's, so yeah. I mean, that's, that's such a great problem to have because <laughs> you know, you get, you get so many, uh, so many women and honestly, so many men that I work with, it's like they do everything right. And look, just like, can I put on a pound of muscle this year, please. Right. Like they got to fight and do everything right for it. And so if it comes a little bit more easily to the point where you're like, eh, I don't know, this might be a bit much. I mean, God, what a, yeah. what a gift. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Meanwhile, everybody listening to this right now hates you, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> no, don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so also like after taking those two years off, you're getting, you're coming back in 2023, you're thinking wellness. Was that more about like, were you already kind of thinking that as soon as wellness came around or was it more about assessing where women's physique was when you were ready to get back into it and saying like, yeah, I don't think so. The second. Yeah. Okay. Um, cause I wasn't really in the mindset of bodybuilding during those two years off. Um, kind of out of the loop a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Trying to do the fair. norm. <laughs> Wait, yeah. what be, is that be a normie. Anyway? <laughs> what is that anyway? Um, exactly. I've forgotten at this point. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> Normal's all relevant anyway. It um, is. So yeah, it was just more of a like, 
wow, there's this new division. I'm already quad dominant. Um, I've already had legs because I was a soccer player my whole life. Um, so to me, I was like, let's just see. I know I don't have that tiny waist, but man, if you can pose correctly, you can give the illusion. Um, Seriously. And yeah. Trish is amazing with the posing and all that. So she's really helped me um, a ton. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of like, let's try it. Let's see if I even have a chance. I reached out to a couple people on um, line. Uh, I don't know if I can say it, but the Wellness and More sure. channel. Um, yeah. I had kind of asked his advice because he follows a lot of the wellness girls, obviously, and mm -hmm. just said, what do you think? Do I even have like what it takes to keep going in this direction or should I go back to physique? And, um, you know, he gave me some good <sighs> tips, which Trish and I had already discussed and knew anyway. Um, so I thought, well, if there's still somewhat of a potential, not only from him, but from Trish and some other people. Um, obviously, it really comes down to me, but um, yeah. I kind of like to get a little bit of an outside source. Um, yeah. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to keep going and just, just see because I hadn't actually trained for this. So I want to see what I can do when I actually do the full training for it. And um, it paid off. We'll say that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So you've done, you've done the two shows and that's it. Just Legion and 23 and 24 as well. Correct. as. And so 23, you mentioned you went there, didn't place well. Um, I don't think those were your exact words, but more or less. Um, <laughs> but you took that more as like, uh, like, were you happy with where you were and say like, okay, this is proof. Like I can do it. I felt like I belonged up there, but clearly I've got some work to do. Was it more like that? Yes. So it was um, like a, oh my gosh. sorry, my dog real quick. Oh, how big of a dog is this? 150 pounds. Oh, so you can't pick him up and put him on your lap? No. <laughs> he could pick me up. I could ride him like a horse. <laughs> I've, I've got a 22-pounder a, a around here somewhere and a 35-pounder around here. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. I have a 20-pounder and then the 150 All-American Bulldog, and my 20-pounder is the alpha. <laughs> That's so like a, a horse and a jockey is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, so sorry, <laughs> sorry. Where were we? <laughs> uh, Twenty three. How do you how do you come out of that show feeling? Um. Obviously, you always want to place better. I mean, my my kind of motto is no one trains for second place. Um, yeah. But to me, I have that competitive mindset of an athlete that. I'm going to try. I'm going to try again. I'm not going to let it take me out of it. I'm not going to let it take me down. Um, I'm going to use that fuel as fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, did you see like in, in evaluating how that show went, were you able to look at it and be like, okay, I definitely look wellness, like mi mission accomplished. Like I I'm kind of like in the ballpark of where I need to be. And now I just need to refine. Or was it more like, Ugh, we got some work to do. <laughs> um, I had some work to do. Um, okay. In the sense that I probably, that year, I probably should have done physique. Um, because I was lean, I was ready, I was, I was a physique girl, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. So, but at the pro level, you can't cross over necessarily. Right, and so. I mean, you're going to have a transition year at some point, whether it was yeah. last year or whether it's this year. Right. And so, eh. Yeah, last year was my transition. Let's just see and then take it from there. Um, yeah. this year I was lucky enough to get judge feedback. I just got it literally yesterday, I think. <laughs> nice. Okay. What did um, they say? He said that I certainly brought strength to the stage, but a little too much in the upper body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so we and are like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So back to the drawing board, which is what we've already kind of known and have been doing anyway is just downsize the upper body so another um, eight months of no upper body <laughs> right well um i'd like to compete possibly earlier in the season next year um and to do more than one show but again it's not a poor man's sport so um yeah. and i have no idea where wellness is i was more familiar with 
you know, where the physique shows are and how I could um, kind of work those around each other. So we'll see what uh, 2025 brings. Um, at Legions, I was speaking to a woman backstage, the one that got third place. Um, I think her name's Chinsia. Uh, anyhow, okay. she's amazing because I had also met her in 2023. Um, but she had qualified for the Masters Olympia. So she was talking to me about that. And I'm like, okay, where have I been? Because I didn't even realize that was an option. <laughs> um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to aim high because that's just going to help me whatever so totally um, i would love to try to qualify for masters olympia and so, have you been favoring legions the past couple of years because it's closer to home it's a little bit more convenient yeah it's a driving distance yeah that, that yeah. helps just because yeah. again a, a, as you say and as i uh, remind people on pretty much a daily basis it's not a poor man's sport and yeah. Like just the day to day of it, like your grocery bill is more expensive than everybody else's. You've got all this other stuff to consider. And then like you have the actual show it. expenses. <laughs> no, you don't think so? Well, I mean, I try to do it. Obviously, I try to pinch pennies where I can. So, you know, yeah. big bag of rice well, can last me a long time. <laughs> it is. And what I always tell people, like, you know, because I write, I write diets and meal plans for people all day long. And some people are like, you know, can, you know, some guy who he's like, you know, 180 pounds and he wants to have like 300 grams of protein. I'm like, you can do that. You don't really get much benefit out of it, but man, protein is more expensive than everything else. So have the least amount that you can and save yeah. some pennies, dude. Like, right. Well, cause so last year on my meal plan, Trish <clears throat> had me um, doing quite a bit of um, sirloin. Mm. Um, but I also live in California where everything's quadrupled its price so yeah. <laughs> yeah it was an expensive season so this year i told her i said hey it's got to be chicken <laughs> it's got to be you know the cheapest amount because yeah it's yeah I, I understand it adds up but um whatever i can buy by the pallet pretty much yeah and yeah. Uh, i'm never going to become a vegan or vegetarian so <laughs> We're just going to have to make it work. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to buy like 15 uh, or like 100 chickens and just stick them in the freezer. And then if prices go up, I'm set for the next year anyway. It's fine. So literally, I have 14 chickens in my yard because that's where I get my morning breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes. Okay. So, so how much do eggs cost? You don't care. doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I mean, there still is a cost to it. That I wouldn't say they're free because I got to feed those things. You got to got to feed the chicken. It's a little work, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I love it. Uh, I'm a little country girl at heart, a little hippie at heart. Um, That's funny. So. Are, are you from California? Or are you from somewhere else? Yes. No, nope. born oh. raised. <laughs> I didn't know California grew country girls. <laughs> grew. <them. laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean, I, I'm I'm from Oregon, so I know like you know people think Oregon, they think hippies. I'm like, you're gonna find some of the most redneck parts of the country in rural Oregon, so I know that much. So I figure California probably has some spots like that too. They do, yeah. I guess I'm more like earthy hippie. Okay. Country. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> that, that 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 makes sense. That makes sense. I'm definitely that. not a city girl. We'll say that. Okay. All right. So you, you don't live in the city. You're kind of like out a little bit. No, the suburbs. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm always curious to know, and I have, I have one client who is really, really kind of hung up on this concept because he comes from a racing background and his racing? background racing. Yeah. Okay. Um, specifically like bike racing, okay. um, like motorbike racing. Oh, okay. And so with him, it's like you run the track, Whoever gets there first at the shortest time wins. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing subjective about it. Right. And so he is constantly because I mean he competes in classic physique. He and he's he does pretty well. Um, but he's like, how do people reconcile this? Like I come from a background where a winner is very clear, and here it's all based on somebody's opinion. So for you, right. having a soccer background, mm -hmm. nobody judges the quality of your goal. Like, oh, that, now, I don't know, that, that was a, a really good save. We're going to count more, you know, against the other team for that because that was a high quality. It's like, what's the scoreboard say? Okay, right. cool. That's so it. how Welcome do you kind of get, 
how do, how do you get from that and that background to bodybuilding where it's completely opinion based and there's there's some criteria but sometimes it doesn't really seem like they're really followed super closely okay. so how do you kind of get over that cognitive dissonance in your head um it's honestly just a mindset i believe i mean um just kind of okay you know the difference now of the sports so you I mean, I think honestly, bodybuilding comes down to sure you can follow the political side to it, but it really has to come down to whether you love it or not. Um, whether it's something that, you know, does anything for you. Like, so if you just keep getting, you know, down and down and down and down on it, you're probably going to end up stopping. Um, for me, I just, I use it as the fuel. Um, so yeah i guess you have to oh gosh i don't even know how to explain it really um, i know that that's the thing is trying to put it in words if i can let, let me let me paraphrase and put some words in your mouth and you can tell me if i'm way off base here if you compete just to win you're doing it for the wrong reasons like winning correct. is nice but you've got to be in it for the process of it and the experience of going through it as much as anything else okay you nailed it okay all right you nailed it <laughs> we've solved all the problems then we're done <laughs> The world is a better place now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if that were only true, if it were only that easy, if it were only that easy, <laughs> my goodness. So take me through like a, a typical day in the life of Teresa Myers. Like, you know, what, you know, training time, like, you know, I, I know a lot of people that listen to this, they like to, you know, obviously everything uh, for every person is going to be a little bit different, but I, I think people always like getting insights from the pros and the people who've had some success at a high level at this. So like, if you look back to how you started versus what you're doing now, what kind of things have changed? Um, gosh, not much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my Perfect. life is still like, you want to more, know more about like my personal life, right? Like, well, or like, you know, like, uh, you know, I used to, I used to train in the morning and now I find I perform way better if I train later in the day or like I used yeah. to do this on my diet and now I'm doing this or. Okay. No. So mine hasn't trained in that aspect. So, um, I started after I had children. Um, so to me, I guess at the beginning it was more of like, a, okay, my life is always going to, I'm going to always have to technically diet and exercise because just as easy as I can put on muscle, yes, I can put on the weight. Um, so to me, with my athlete mindset at the beginning, it was like, well, if I'm going to have to do this anyway for the rest of my life, why don't I do something awesome with it? <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of what um, kind of started me. Um, but I have never had a set schedule. So I work around children, family, um, my job. I work for myself, luckily. I do hair and makeup, um, and I do competitors' hair and makeup, too. So I kind of know where that goes. But um, Do you do your own for your own shows? I do. Or do you, let some, you do? I okay. Do All right. There was one year I, I got it done just to kind of spoil myself, and it was pretty nice. But um, <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> I know we we're talking about that, so, right? Again, I mean, that's another. As a area. guy, I know all about it. <laughs> Thankfully, I have that um, niche, so I can save money there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've always, I just, I, I made it to where I would work my workouts in between everything else going on. Um, I have two kids of my own right now, currently a stepson as well. So, and they're in sports, and I'm driving them everywhere. Um, so between all that madness and then my little farm and my garden and my dogs and, um, you know, trying to find some me time, uh, yeah, it's just, it's yeah. never been a consistent schedule. I just know that if I want to make it happen, I have to make it work. So sure. I'll go to the gym at 4am if I have to, I'll go there at 11pm at night. If I have to, I'll go there in the middle of the day. Like I just. I work it around everything, so. There's always a baseline level of chaos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Constant <laughs> chaos. <laughs> well, and, and so man, that, that's interesting. I know interesting. for me now, though, like, I prefer to get it done early, so then I don't have the rest of the day stressing of, like, okay, I got to get it in this time, or I got to get it in. Because there's been many moments where I've had to cut it short, 
just because, you know, life happens. Um, but I try not to, obviously, but, but yeah, yeah. you got to be a little bit flexible because, yes, we're all human and have lives outside of it. But for the most part, I try to, you know, prioritize. If I take care of myself, I can do better at taking care of others. Yeah, yeah. And I was, you know, I go back to what they used to tell people uh, in the uh, speech before your plane takes off, you know, take care of your own mask before you help your neighbor with theirs. It's like, yes, you, yes. you got to take I, care of your own shit first. <laughs> yeah, right. And I think uh, women in general, not all, but in general, uh, we're caretakers. So yes, we can put our needs aside to, you know, help others. Um, but I think, and then there's guilt that comes with that. So um, I think women, especially, I'm not saying men shouldn't, but women, especially, especially as moms, like we really need to set that side or that time aside for ourselves. Yeah, I want to I want to dig in on that guilt aspect actually because I, I hear I hear about that a lot from clients and uh, you know, I've had clients quit before because they're like this just feels too selfish. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. have you had moments like that where you're like, man, what am I doing? Or it, times where you're like, you know what, I'm justified in doing this because I give a lot as well, and so I can take some for myself too. Absolutely, um, yeah. There's been many a moments of that of like, well, especially when you have kids, you're like. Should I be doing something with them versus just something for myself? Like, um, how bad do I really need to hit shoulders today? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, no, bad. <laughs> yep, <laughs> very bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, well, within that, too, like, I feel now kind of knowing the difference of training with wellness and physique. I mean, with physique, you got to get down to 6% body fat versus yeah. wellness. You can be a little higher, so... Physically and mentally, I think wellness is a little bit healthier for me um, or a little bit more obtainable. Um, and I don't have the extreme, um, you know, to each their own. But that's just my personal thing, too, is that, okay, this might be a healthier option for me. I won't feel you've never really had a, a huge, you've never really had a huge problem getting lean, though, right? I mean, it's work, of course. Uh, but... No, I, I have. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't always been this easy. I think for me, I had to really focus on my off seasons to create it to not be so hard mm -hmm. when I do get into competition prep. <coughs> That's a lot of it. Um, and what makes this sport so hard in 24 seven is that your off scene season counts just as much as your in season. Um, and my first few years for sure, I just didn't have that, um, mentality or like experience yet so it just you know you just think you can go back to normal and what again what's normal but um you can't <laughs> we're, we're you gonna can't. ask that a lot you can't you just <laughs> no can't. <laughs> I, I i like to because i have a, a a little bit of a background in theater and so um, i like to make theater analogies or music analogies whenever i can and relate that stuff to bodybuilding because that's the language that i spoke before i got into this uh -huh. and so i always say that like you know a bodybuilding competitive season is like a play and the off season are your rehearsals uh -huh. and prep is the performance and if you don't have a good rehearsal, nobody's going to want to watch your performance. And if you don't have a good off season, uh, your prep and your show itself are meh. I mean, they're just right. nobody's. It's not. It's not going to leave a mark, and it's not going to advance you anywhere. Yeah. You've got to put in the time on the rehearsal side of things. Yeah, and you really have to not let outside influences affect you because everybody now will be like, "Oh, you can have this again, and you can have that again, and the holidays are coming up." and um, you know, you can be fun again. It's like, uh, <laughs> like no. I'm never fun. Just get that out of your head. I'm not fun. No, that doesn't happen. Say? Uh, no sugar, no carbs, no alcohol, no fun. <laughs> It sounds about right. Sounds about right. So, so here's the thing. So you, you have, you know, Trish, your coach, I assume that she always gives it to you straight. And if you're like Absolutely. a little off or whatever, she's going to tell you. But <clears throat> I imagine, I think everybody who competes has people like this in their lives where they're always like, oh my God, you look so good. Like, or like you look so unhealthy right now or something yeah. like that. But people are always like, you know, you're, 
you're 14 weeks out from a show and people are like, oh my God, is the show this weekend? You're going to win for sure. Right. And like some of that, because they don't know, right? right. I mean, right. the normies out there, they have no context for this stuff. Right. Um, but do you find it pretty easy to kind of block that stuff out? Like, you know, do, does your mom tell you like, you're going to win or anything like that? I mean, just family members. Of course my mom tells me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you can't, a winner. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I'm, I'm not going to argue with mom. not going to argue with mom. But I mean, you've got to kind of block a lot of that out. And like, okay, cool. Trish, what do you say? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and Trish is like, she's the best. She's not going to sugarcoat nothing. She's not going to put her name on something that should not be on stage. Um, <laughs> so what I've learned too, and I mean, I guess I, I don't know if it's gotten thicker over the years, but um, you got to have thick skin. Um, because if you have thin skin and you're going to take everybody's opinion and let it affect you, you, you just can't, whether it's, you know, a good opinion or a bad one, you have to put on that thick skin and just say, hey, I want it real, I want it raw, because I don't want to make an embarrassment out of myself. I don't want to step on stage if I'm really not ready. Um, yes, I know there's some people out there that, yeah, it's a bucket list, or, you know, they've lost hundreds of pounds or whatnot, and kudos. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, not shaming them at all. The thing is, is when you get to the pro level, um, and you want to you know, get up there and you want to maintain it. I mean, you really have to, you have to take the hits and you have to take them to heart and you have to, you know, make good out of them. Like, um, I mean, because I've been with Trish for so long, she kind of knows me. She's like, wow, you do really good under pressure. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. For some reason. Yeah. There, that was more in my physique days. Like I would just kind of slack and, you know, I mean, yes, I have kids and I love mac and cheese and ice cream and um, whatnot, but she's like, all those bites add up and, you know, this girl over there is not eating that. So, um, yeah. It's one of those things like you have, you have to kind of get your ass handed to you on stage a few times before that stuff sinks in sometimes. Absolutely. I think. And you can't let it put you down. You have to, again, use that as fuel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to let Trish tell me, oh, like, you're really holding stuff in your backside, you know, get your shit together. Um, <laughs> you know, I can't be like, oh, I'm not, I can't do it now. Um, no, I have to take that and say, okay, she's being real. Get my shit together and go forward. Yeah. Um, so you, you can't take a lot of it personal. You just have to, you have to use, it's part of the game, part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had clients who like, you know, they, they email me and like, maybe it's something, it's not our regular check in day, but I wanted a midweek update from them or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I had some issues. I had some extra stuff over the weekend. Here we go. Do we need to make any dietary changes? I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to drop your calories down any lower because you're already breaking the diet as it is right now. Like, right. That's only going to make it worse. Like, right. get your shit together yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah. Like, prove like, to me that much, you can handle it. How much cardio do you really want to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do none. Yeah, so. that, that's, that, that's my lifetime goal, actually, is no cardio. <laughs> right? I'd rather eat less and not have to do cardio. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I took the, the opposite strategy for my, my last prep because I competed in June, and I coached myself for that, which I won't do that again, but it was uh, it was an experience. I will yeah. say that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I'm like, I will do more cardio just so that I can eat more. And so wow. I did I did 90 minutes a day, seven days a week, and I was okay with it. And, and so that let me keep my macros up. And I'm like, I think this is a recipe that works for me. And somebody else might have the exact opposite of experience, like tank my calories to nothing, just keep my cardio at zero. Mm -hmm. Like ultimately, you know, e either extreme can work to some extent at least. Right. So are you more of like a middle of the road kind of person? Um, it was middle of the road. Um, well, back when I was doing physique, I had to do a ton of cardio. Um, mm. I think part of that was, you know, because yeah, I, I wouldn't, I'd never actually done a prep 100% until I entered wellness. Really? Yes. By 100%, you mean well, what? Okay, Let's define that. that. 
99. <laughs> okay. So we're, 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 what, what's that 1% that we're talking about? Like, Oh gosh. Um, well, okay. I mean, I guess let's, let's use this as an example. So back in 2018, when I was going for my pro card, Trish lived with me and she had to tweak from me eating sweet bell peppers to the regular bell peppers. She confiscated my sugar-free gum. <laughs> like, I had to tweak it so fine-tuned to where I was even having to eat raw almonds versus trying to sneak an almond milk in my coffee. Um, <laughs> because your body digests that differently. Uh, at the time, she had a, a gentleman working for her, James <clears throat> Anderson, rest his soul. Um, he was like my big brother, even though he's younger than me. But um, he he really, like, well, he knew me, which was great. Because the longer you are with a coach, even, they start to know you. Not only how your body responds, but also your personality. Well, especially um, if they live with you. I can't even imagine that. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you better win that pro card when your coach lives with you. And I was like, okay, I won't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> pressure. Again, yeah, pressure. So I was like, not only did I win it, but I won the overall. So kudos there to There you Trish. go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, it was so, it's so fine-tuned. Like, people don't understand even the effects of artificial sweetener in your system. Um, carbonated sodas or waters. Um, because when you are that lean, you see everything. Yeah, um, and it's like having an x-ray machine, kind of. You can almost see exactly what's going on oh, inside. You're, you're like literally again. turned inside out, especially yeah. with women's physique. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's where I could say I was never quite a hundred percent until she, um, was like, pretty yeah, but, but pr pretty, pretty close to a hundred percent. I think close enough that most people would probably count it as a hundred percent. Probably, probably. Yeah. Um, I've learned you can't, I can't personally compete with a macro based, um, diet. Mine mm -hmm. has to be so specific. Um, I'm not great with that anyway to try to figure out oh if i do this over here it replaces this over here just with um, the accounting side of things huh just with the accounting side of things like macros etc yeah just it's such a science too that i don't know how my body would digest you know this over here versus that over there um yeah. so yeah it's just it's so fine-tuned but um i would say between 2023 and 2024 well, 2023 was the first year that Trish took over everything. She did my diet, my posing, my workouts, my everything. And it was the best shape I'd ever been in. Um, and then I took that and I had the absolute best off season I'd ever done. So, you know, it only took me 10 years, but whatever. <laughs> A lot of people never figure that out. Yeah. Better late than never. Yeah. Um, but it, it just... Once you do it and you realize the effects of it and how important it is, um, then you can roll with it. But, I mean, every, everybody on the outside world that has never actually competed once in their lives, honestly, don't really get an opinion. <laughs> I mean, that, that's fair. I, I, to I totally agree with that. And, you know, I'm sure like you get it all the time. Like you go to parties or social functions and, you know, if you're not like wearing a, a hoodie or a parka or something like that and people can see you, everybody wants to walk up to you and talk to you and ask you what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. And at some point you're just like, you, you got to be like, you don't really care. Like you just right. want me to tell you that there's a pill or something and there yeah. isn't. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the end of the conversation. Yes, yes. Um, I know I have actually a lot of women will come up to me and be like, oh my God, I love your arms and your shoulders. Like, I, I would love to be in shape, but I don't want to look like you. And I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, don't worry, you can't. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry. And don't worry, I don't want to look like you either. Right, right. <laughs> it, it goes like, both ways. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, I, I, I can only imagine just culturally, like, you know, uh, men and women, uh, bodybuilders are just treated so differently. Um, yeah. Like no, nobody, no guy is ever going to come up to me and be like, Oh my God, your shoulders, but I wouldn't want to look like you. I mean, 
right. and they, it's just not part of the conversation. It's right. not part of people's vocabulary. And I think the hardest part too is like men look great in off season where so, women some of them. we've gotten the huh? <laughs> some of them. Well, well, so, I mean some of them some of them not so much. I'm talking about myself here. <laughs> oh, stop. A majority <laughs> men can wear like wear their body fat a little better um like because i've gotten a lot of comments in off season of like oh did you did you stop bodybuilding like yeah you are do you depressed that? are you okay yeah like, like whoa yeah. you're really out you know and and people don't understand like i can't stay shredded stage ready all year long like would yeah. i love to sure but it's not sustainable you can't live like that it's not yeah it's not part of the game either if i want to build the muscle i need to have the body fat and put on the weight and eat the calories um to get to next year's goal or whatever next season's goal is that so this i'm glad you said that because this brings up something that really i want to touch on here because i work with a lot of new competitors first timers aspiring competitors um and they make it to the show and then they think that that is now the normal and it's like no we have to regress from that and your conditioning is going to fade a little bit. That's part of the process. It's required. Was that um, a little bit of a shock for you the first time? Or were you okay with it? Yeah, no, that's the body dysmorphia. It's the mm -hmm. like, oh my God, like I've seen myself at my best and I'm not there anymore. Um, women are definitely harder on themselves, I think in general anyway. And then to be a competitor, it's harder. Um, I'm not saying that men aren't, but... I think mm. generally women have it a little bit more because we're more emotional about it. <laughs> um, I, I, guys are pretty emotional too, but I do, okay. I do believe you're correct. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, you're, you're correct though. I think women have it harder just because there's the added level of greater societal expectations and, and expectations from other people too. Correct. Um, and so you yeah. kind of have to internalize that in some way. But I mean, you, you know, you get down to like seven percent. Uh, body fat for a show and then you get back up to nine percent you're like oh my god i'm so fat now mm -hmm. it's like, like oh, there, there's definitely a little bit of, all sudden or yeah yeah it's like no it's it's still just skin like there's yeah, there's like, nothing oh, else the there veins gone <laughs> yeah it's like oh my life is over now oh my god right. yeah no it's it was really hard um when i first started um <clears throat> well a i didn't do my off seasons well but um yeah, you have to you have to ignore what other people say or think. Uh, you have to focus on your own goals, um, and you know you know the process because you're living it. Um, other people don't understand it, which is fine. They don't have to understand it, um, but I just prefer they don't say anything. Then <laughs> it'd be nice. And I, yeah. I, my my wife kind of got me on this kick here, where she she says, and this is unrelated to bodybuilding at all, but it applies here as well. Um, is that I just think we should get to a spot where people don't comment on other people's bodies. That'd be like, great. Just whatever you're thinking, just shut up and keep it to yourself. Yeah. Nobody cares what your opinion is. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Unless you're unless you're a judge or a coach, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do like the compliments. We'll say that. But. Well, yeah, but then <laughs> leave your leave your butt. You know, but I don't want your shoulders. Leave that part out. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. You yeah. Know, I'll yeah. take the praise and then stop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like, okay, so two, two, two really big important questions here. Okay. Um, what? So th this is kind of mythical and almost hypothetical. But what does Teresa Myers do with her free time? <laughs> um, well, I'm a mom. Um. <laughs> and sleeping doesn't count, by the way. That's not free time. <laughs> I don't do much of that anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a wife. Um, I have a massive garden in my yard. I've got my chickens, I've got my dogs. Um, I do hair and makeup for a living. Um, that's pretty much all I can try to find time for. But um, <laughs> I used to play guitar. Um, no way. And have like a musical side to me, but I haven't done that in so long. I probably couldn't even play anymore. Um, Electric or yeah. acoustic? Acoustic. Oh, okay. All right. I used to sing in a band in high school. <laughs> Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have this very like artistic and musical side. Um, 
I, when I first started college, I was going for studio art, which is like painting and drawing. And um, so that's what actually turned me to hair because it was painting where I could actually make something instead of, you know, Fascinating. If I was dead, maybe I'd make something off my art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> it was a way to do art and make a living out of it. Um, so, yeah, I have a very, I guess, artistic side to me. Um, cool. I love music and, I mean, really, I mean, I don't have a lot of time right now. With I know. Life and the age of my kids. It, it helps to have that, or as I tell people, like, if you have a support staff, that's great. But as long as you don't have people that are dragging you down, that's that's really like step one. Like try and make that happen for yourself first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, surround yourself with like-minded people. It, it definitely it, it, as much as you can. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, saying, there's a saying that I like. It's watch me, join me, or get the out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. I like. I, I would. I would probably rephrase that and say, "Watch me, join me, or just please be indifferent about what I'm doing. Like, right. just right. just look the other way. Just right. Yeah. Like, just ignore yeah. me. Yeah. Please. Watch please. Me I love you or ignore me. <laughs> I love being ignored. That's that's like my goal in life is to be ignored by as many people as possible. Like, just. I mean, the problem for me is, and you probably experience this as well, is like when you're in the gym and you're you know four weeks out from a show, you're looking pretty crazy that's when everyone wants to come up and talk to you and be like wow you look really crazy right now and that's also when you're like oh my god I'm so irritable I don't want to talk to anybody right now yeah. Just, I don't even have thank you to put myself together or yeah go anywhere. Um, exactly yeah I mean luckily I did not experience that these last two shows because um, I, I was eating lots of calories and trying to fill up. So I'm like, I don't even have cravings. I was eating ice cream the night before and morning of Legions. Man. Um, yeah. She was trying you suck. to. <laughs> you absolutely suck. I know. You hate me more now. Yep. Um, <laughs> but don't hate me. Um, <laughs> That's, that yeah, ship has sailed, so, Teresa. I'm sorry. Say that again. <laughs> that ship has sailed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's, not there, sorry. There's, there's a lot of hate coming through the screen right now. <laughs> well, I'm happy, so <laughs> that that <laughs> counts. And honestly, honestly, that doesn't happen if you don't do the job right beforehand. So you know, it's yeah. uh, you earned it. You know, both you earned the shows, ability to be a little was, bit more relaxed. Yeah, both shows I was ready four weeks out uh, for sure. So it was like, okay, let's try to coast. Um, but then it was more like, okay, let's try to like because we we would do refeeds and um so last year i did more cheat meals um mm -hmm. i was eating you know burgers and fries and pizza and ice cream and i was still just like not filling out um so i think that was part of maybe you know the filling out part didn't look as as good i would say mm -hmm. um this year she did more refeeds so it's the right food just more of it on a daily basis rather than you know every couple days doing something dirty um yeah. and i think that helped this season that was filling you out better yeah i think we i probably could have filled out a little bit more even though i personally i like more of the lines and the the leanness look um mm -hmm. And I told Trish both seasons, I said, you know what, we're just going to come in how I am because there's like, we, we're trying to tweak it as much as we can, but my body's only going to do what it's going to do. So, um, so yeah, I mean, 12 week prep is short to begin with. And then the fact <laughs> that I've basically been able to do it in eight weeks is like mind boggling. Um, so yeah. So does that does that give you and Trish something to think about? Like you know maybe next time if we're starting from like the same level of conditioning, maybe we try and do it in nine or ten, and spend less time coasting. Or do you feel like you're kind of playing with fire at that point? Yeah, I feel like you're you're messing with fire at that point because you don't want to because then you don't have time, you know, to buy. So like if I'm, it's usually better to be ready beforehand. Oh yeah. And to tweak it that way versus like ah oh, we're down to the wire. Like you still have to do this much and then add more cardio or take more food out. I'd rather be ready early. 
um, through my experience, because I've, I've been the other direction where I was not ready. Um, even 2021, my very last physique show, I was not ready. I did not do that prep 100%. <laughs> I was just like, I think I just, I was just kind of done at that point. I just kind of hit a fatigue. Um, so yeah, that show was like my worst, I would say. Um, I think there's some, some mindset stuff involved here too, because I think if you get yourself ready, then in terms of the diet, you have the opportunity to pull your foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Yes. It's like, okay, we don't need to be in a deficit. Let's kind of bring us up towards maintenance. And I yes. think with a lot of people, um, especially who are maybe newer competitors, once they get their calories raised back up to maintenance, they kind of lose some of that killer instinct that's in the mm -hmm. back of their head. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, okay, I'm just coasting. So, eh. Mm -hmm whatever and then they don't they don't come in as sharp just because yeah. their intensity drops a little bit yeah well it was nice because really she stripped cardio mostly um which i'm like that's cool <laughs> yeah you, did, um, you didn't feel like lazy from not doing cardio or anything like that no i still had a tiny bit but um no i think because my outside life is so chaotic she even at one you, point was like welcome i need to stop gardening at this point <laughs> <laughs> and i do hair so my arms are up here all the time um, oh that so you're you're like constantly getting a shoulder pump all day long if you're oh, doing yeah, hair like all, that it's up here all day that's the problem. She's going to make you like get a giant stool to stand on so you can work right, down so here on do it down low. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then she was like, "Okay, maybe you're doing too much gardening now. Like stop that." But I was like, "Well, I can't not pick my vegetables." <laughs> okay. Chickens need attention, Trish. Sorry. Right. Yeah, exactly. My goodness. And oh my uh God. yeah, just my daily life with the kids and pets and everything is just a go go go. So um so for her to just strip the, you know, treadmill is like no big deal. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's, here's the question that I always look forward to the most um, because I feel like it reveals the most about a person's character. Let's hypothetical situation here. Let's say you're out driving around and it's a road rage incident or something like that. And you, you get in a fight with some motorist and you kill him just because it's like, Oh my God. I just, and so the cops come, they arrest you. You're tried, you're convicted, you're put to death. You're going to be executed. You get one meal, one meal, Teresa. What is it? God, my cravings change, but I would probably say my, most go to would be a cheeseburger. Sweet potato fries. Cheeseburger. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So I feel like there, there's something to be worked up here. You know how people say, like, you know, what's your astrological sign? And they'll tell you all, all about your personality based on that. <laughs> I, I think that this, like, I could probably do the same thing based on somebody's answer to this question. So like a cheeseburger with sweet potato fries, I don't, I don't have it all worked out yet, but I know that that's, that says stuff about you, and I'm just not sure what it is. <laughs> um, it, it, from, from any, any space in particular or any place? Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, where the cheeseburger comes from? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, just a cheeseburger. <laughs> just, just an indiscriminate random cheeseburger that you found I mean, on the street somewhere. I mean, I obviously would not choose a McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> Okay, I want, that's, that's kind of what I was looking for there. Okay, I want good. restaurant quality. Um, so, like, that's kind of what I've learned, too, as a mindset in um, off-season, is that if I'm going to have something, I want it to be quality because um, I'm not getting the quantity. So I'm going to choose C's candy over just Hershey's, or I'm going to choose a quality restaurant uh, cheeseburger versus um you know mcdonald's or in and out um yeah so yeah that, i don't know if that <laughs> that, that that's absolutely it. It, it reminds me also we had to go out on um friday and a friend's band was playing at this place it's not really a bar but they serve bar food there mm -hmm. and i'd been watching the olympia all day long i was behind on my meals and we had to leave at just the wrong time so it's like i just got to eat something there and i, I don't want to do that but what do they have and yeah. so they had this burger with like some beer battered fries or something like that i'm like okay sure let's do it mm -hmm. and it comes out and it was quality not quantity like it was kind of a small portion of fries the oh. burger was like this big around it yeah, was like, it was 
and, but it was so good. I'm oh, like, yeah. yeah, that was fine. That was fine. It was probably Thank under you. my calories for what that meal should have been. <laughs> um, but like, so yeah, normally I'm like, give me a burger the size of a dinner plate, put four yeah. patties on it, yeah. put everything on it. But like that yeah. was, that was oh, perfect. Plus I had to eat it. Egg and everything on yeah. it. Yeah. I also had to eat it standing up. So it was, you know. Yes. So I had a funny yeah. story after Legions this year, uh, which is in Reno, right? And I, I didn't have like crazy cravings, but I was like, I want pizza because I haven't had pizza in a long time. Because usually if I got like a cheat meal during my prep, it'd be a cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. um, so anyhow, pizza was my food of choice. So we go to this place eight o'clock on a Saturday night and they're out of pizza dough. And I'm like, what? This is Reno, oh which is God. like a version of Vegas. How do you, how are you out of pizza dough? But I'm assuming it's because most competitors went there after the show. Oh, I got there. Yeah. They had run out. But there's a little Mexican restaurant next door. So we go there. And I was bummed technically because I most of my meal plan right now is tacos. Like, I eat tacos <laughs> every day, all day. So I'm like, I don't really want Mexican food. But we'll, let's go for nachos because that's different. Um <laughs> And they were all right, but at that point, I was just so tired, and I was in my adrenaline low that it just didn't even matter what I ate. Luckily, I had some chocolate chip cookies back at the room, so... <laughs> so not all was lost? No. <laughs> oh, man. man. I, but it's I, uh... hard when, when you have something in mind that you're craving so bad after a show, and then for it not to be available, it's like... It could be devastating. It, I, it, that's exactly the word I was going to use. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I um, learned with like my my sweets, like my chuck chip cookies or my baked goods that I'm craving. I bring them myself because I've done it to where I'm like, oh, I'll go find something or there should be something and there's nothing. So I'm like, nope, yeah. I'm bringing them every time then. <laughs> You got to have that insurance policy. Yeah. 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 It, along the, along that lines, I mentioned my last prep, I kept my food higher and my cardio higher as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the most telltale sign of how that worked for me was after the show, Saturday night, um, we're in Chattanooga. So we're like two hours from home. And uh, my wife's like, okay, where are we going to eat? Where do you want to go? And I literally told her like, I don't care. Where do you want to go? Like I'm, I'm not really craving anything in particular. It's like what anything sounds good. Nothing sounds amazing. Like what, right. we could just go back to the Airbnb, except I didn't bring any food with me beyond mm -hmm. what I've already had today. So it's like we got to go out and get something. But it's like yeah. you get in that place where you're like, eh, like I just finished my show and I'm not really craving anything too bad. Yeah. That's like, okay, that worked. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was me because I mean I had ice cream and I love ice cream. So I was like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes eating it before the night before and the morning of I'm like I'm good <laughs> yeah exactly well Teresa this has been awesome I appreciate your time where can people find you online um like my Instagram yeah um, anywhere I have Facebook too but I, I don't interact a whole lot on Facebook but um my Same. Instagram is T L M strong IFBB pro okay no underscores or anything like that I don't think so. I don't <laughs> you don't think so? I, don't check. I, I can always fact check that as well. <laughs> right? I have to fact check myself here. <laughs> yeah, no underscores. So TLM strong IFBB pro. Okay, cool. No, no, no TikTok or anything or? No. Yeah, all right. That's fair. That's, that's all uh, good. <laughs> there's, there's too many platforms. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't and if got time for that. <laughs> if people want to find you for like hair and makeup, um, do you have like a, a separate business for that, or is that like linked from your profile? I assume you just do that in your local area there. Yeah, I do. Um, I just I prefer just word of mouth advertising okay. for that. Um, yeah, that's that's just my preference. But I was gonna look at my okay. Facebook one real quick, but. I think my Facebook is set to private, but I'll probably change that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just Teresa Myers IFBB Pro. Okay. Is that a page or just a personal? Um, that's just my personal Facebook. Personal profile. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, anything else Again, you wanted to add? Is there... Instagram, so Instagram is probably the best. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that um, you wanted to cover that I forgot to ask, like an idiot? 
Gosh, you covered a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, for, for me on the podcast, it's quantity over quality. I've got to make sure I ask a lot of questions and some of them will be good. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I'm good. I mean, okay. Yeah, I can't think well, of anything. I, I thank you for joining me here and good luck on 2025 as soon as you get plans set for whatever the calendar is going to look like next yes, year. Thank you. And hang, uh, hang around here with me. I will say goodbye to the audience. Thank you. This has okay. been, I don't know, I think it's episode 274, I think, okay. if that, uh, I think so. So anyway, thank you, Teresa. I appreciate it and uh, good luck in 25. Thanks so much.